Herzlich willkommen zum 37. DocFest München. A very warm welcome to the 37th DocFest Munich. My name is Daniel Lang and I'm going to host this talk today. Um, after two years of our online program, we um, are programming a dual festival this year in the cinema and at home. So from May 9th, you can stream most of the films online. Um, today, I'm talking to the director, Matthew Somerville, um, about his film, Sava. Um, it is a film running in our section, Doc Panorama, and it's the German premiere. Hello, Matthew. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, um, Matthew, what made you um, want to make a film about a river in the Balkans? What was the initial sort of uh, idea or what was the initial sort of spark where you said, ah, oh, yeah, that's a film. I'm going to make a, a film about it. Sure, yeah. Um, I think it comes from a number of experiences. I think that uh, the conflict in Yugoslavia was the first war that I saw on my TV as a child growing up. And then, you know, 15 years later, I was studying photography and I was learning about the media and how the media often kind of portrays sensationalist narratives. Fast forward a few years, I was um, in Bosnia, Croatia and Serbia for a period of time. And I, you know, it's one of those moments of realizations that there's still this kind of internal dialogue, especially in kind of Western Europe around that part of the world. And I definitely noticed when I told people that I was there, that there was still these kind of these kind of preconceptions. And so I, I, I was interested, I was 23 years old, I was interested in making a film that explored kind of post Yugoslav identity. And I was very naive. And when I got home, I looked at a river and I looked at a map. And as I saw this river, and I saw how it, flow, uh, it flowed from um, the Slovenian mountains all the way down to Belgrade. And I saw it as like this kind of metaphor as something that is connecting these countries and these people, but are actually now kind of forming borders between the countries, but also the European Union and how Savo is somehow this kind of has this, um, this journey that journeys between kind of uh, Western, Eastern Europe, kind of uh, through the Balkans and and is also the frontier for the European Union. So I decided that in 2013, I drove from London to Belgrade with my friend in my small car. We spent six weeks traveling along the river and I thought, this is great. You know, I was a photographer originally, so I thought, oh, you know, we'll just edit together this film next year and it will be done. And then I think as you get into things and you learn more and you read more and, and you want to make something that's authentic, it took a long period of time. So that's a, it, we ended up filming for about six years and building strong relationships with, other, with some people that you meet in the film and other people, it's much more of a fleeting experience. Um, yeah. And um, the, the film is, is narrated um, by the actress Mira Furlan, um, and she's also, she also is credited as, as, a, as a writer. Could you tell us how she got involved in the project? Yeah, so I think after about four years of filming, you know, and we're thinking, you know, it's a hard film to make. It was a hard film to pitch, you know, when you're saying, oh, I'm making a film about a river and you don't know who you're going to meet along the way um, and to tie those voices together into some kind of succinct narrative. I think that um, after some time, we decided that we wanted to play with, um, with giving the river a voice and actually allowing the river to connect the people verbally as well as, as visually. And so, yeah, we were looking for an older woman that kind of represents somehow like a granddaughter of Mother Nature. And we also wanted someone that was rooted in the region and Mira's personal story is so um, in line with, with, with the message of the film and kind of leaving Croatia in the 90s and moving to America. And as soon as I got in contact with her, um, 
she she got back to us and said yes you know i could sign my name under this statement that nature is bigger than nationalism and and i want to work on this and we never spoke about money or never made an agreement and unfortunately towards the end of, of the editing process she passed away um which was a big surprise and yeah but the in terms of her being a writer i mean the credits are you know pretty transient in a way because everyone is such a small team and a low budget film that everyone was kind of doing everything um but when it came to recording the voice not only did we record kind of scripted things that i'd written and dan had written but we also gave her a series of questions um so like i think her first lines in the film were a genuine response to what was your first memory and then she talks about this memory of flying up towards the light and so it's less of a kind of written um written input from Mira but there was a lot of improvisation I think probably 40 30 40 percent of the final script was improv from Mira and kind of embodying the river and and trying to, to kind of become Sava. Fantastic um Let's talk about your the, your protagonists or the people you meet um, um, on your journey. Um, you've already sort of touched on it a, a little bit, but um, um, did you meet them and then film them, or did you meet them and then say, "Oh, we're going to come back like in a few weeks and film with you"? Is that okay? How did how did that work? And how did what did you look for in your protagonists? Yeah, there's not one answer to this question. Um, you know, some of the people, like the guys that were just drinking down by the river, um, you know, we just stopped off there to get a couple of shots of the river. We weren't even planning to film in that town. And then they saw us and they they didn't really let us leave for 24 hours. And we spent, you know, a long period of time drinking their homemade alcohol. and and um and yeah so uh, you know stories like that kind of came organically but definitely after that first six week trip along the river we came back with a lot of older men who were just drinking and fishing by the river and that's i, I think that's kind of what you encounter if you're moving downstream without any kind of um yeah any any thought beforehand so I think over the years, what we really tried to do is to bring balance and representation and to make sure that there was a variety of voices of people living along Sava represented in the film. Um, so, yeah, I think like, you know, we knew the first person like in Yesenitse, we wanted to work with an old steel worker because that was kind of the identity of the town, which is now like slowly in this industrial decline that the rest of Europe is experiencing. And, and he also speaks about how, you know, they all used to work together when they were um, in Yugoslavia. And so we knew that we were doing that and then we were moving to Ljubljana. So we started to look for kind of a younger female creative voice with mixed identity. Um, so yeah, it's really 50-50 and some people we've filmed with over six years. Some people we filmed in a day, um, but yeah, the last trip that we did in 2019 for another six week trip was really about kind of bringing balance to the film and making sure that there was fair representation of, of all different perspectives. Have you, have you shown the film to your pr pr um, protagonists? Did they, did they see the film or some of them, did they see the film? Some of them have seen it, yeah. Yeah, we managed to do, we we uh, premiered the film at DocuFest in Kosovo in August, and then we went to Sarajevo, to Macedonia, Belgrade, and um, back to Slovenia in a five-week trip. So a few, quite a few people managed to come out and see the film there. And then in September, we we're actually doing a traveling cinema back downstream. Um, so by the end of that point, everyone should have seen it. And what were, the, what were the initial reactions of the, of the people in the film? Ah, um, I think it differs person to person, but I think on a whole, 
I felt a deep appreciation from people both kind of in the film, but also living along the river um, for making the film. And that's, I mean, that feels really special because you're obviously really aware as an outsider coming in to make a film about, you know, most people coming from outside of the region go there to make films about, about the conflicts and massacres and, and the war and finger pointing. And I really didn't want to do that. I didn't feel like that's my story to tell. And so I think people really appreciate it, that it's a, it's a nuanced kind of piece about, about, it is about conflict, and it, but it is also about nature and nationhood and, and things that join us together. Um, and so, yeah, I think, especially for, for Mrs. Udici at the end of the film, who's, whose husband passed away during the editing process. I mean, I think it's a really amazing kind of memory for her to have as a visual representation of what their relationship was like. Um, so watching it next to her in Belgrade was very emotional. Um, but yeah, a lot of people kind of say that someone who was born in Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia or Serbia couldn't have made the film in the same way because there would have been too much, you know, socialization on an individual level and also uh, a kind of, uh, yeah, a, not a mistrust, but just a different way of talking to people. And I think because we were coming from outside the region that gave people license to kind of speak in a, in a slightly different way, I guess. So you would say it helped that you had an outsider's perspective and it helped your protagonist to maybe open up more or in a different way? I think so, yeah. I mean, obviously, some, somebody else could have made the film and it would have been better in some ways and not so good in other ways. And I think that, yeah, it just happens that I became fixated on this and, and dedicated a lot of time to it. And so it's a it's a very different film to what someone that would be would have made from the region but yeah i think it it's um it it does give kind of a, it, it allowed me and it allowed the the people in the film to kind of have a wider perspective on on their own lives and on the river's life and um, you said before that you started shooting in, in 2013. Did you also start editing then or did you finish shooting and then start editing or was it a process that sort of uh, intermingled? Um, and what was the process of editing like for you? Uh, yeah, interesting question. I mean, because I studied photography and so I always kind of thought that that's where my like, documentary photography would be, would be my life. And, and that kind of changed uh, after I left university. And so, like I said, we shot this, we did this first trip in 2013 and then six weeks later came home and I you know, happily got behind my computer and started editing. Because as a photographer, that's what you do, right? You edit your own work, you, you produce your own work and... And so I kind of took that approach into the film early on and, and I made something like 20 minutes long, but incredibly, you know, very nice and beautiful, but quite dry um, in terms of narrative and, and in terms of actually getting something that's deeper than just these cars, kind of passing vignettes. So I started to edit something then and then decided, yeah, that I needed to read more, learn more, watch more. And then two years later, we went back for a few weeks and then the following year, a few more weeks, following year, a few more weeks. And, and actually this film was the first, was the first film that I'd actually worked with an editor on. So I don't have a lot to compare it to, but it was a long process. And, but it was also a really amazing process. It happened through the pandemic. Um, I think we had kind of two or three months editing and I happened to get connected to a young Macedonian editor that was on a work on a, a scholarship in London and so we formed this year-long camaraderie through the pandemic where I would sneak off to his house and we'd edit the film in his kitchen and um 
and yeah, the first three months were rewatching everything that I'd shot. And I, I didn't, didn't factor that in, <laughs> but it was a really, really great process. And it also helps the film to kind of feel rooted in local politics as well, because Gordian was, was from the region. I think he did a really amazing job on the edit as well. Um, you were talking, you were talking about identity. Um, was that like, from, was that like the idea from the very, very beginning to make a film about identity or was it something that developed? It's, I think that's definitely something that developed. I think it's something that I realized kind of, yeah, into the editing process that that's kind of the underlying theme of the whole film really. Um, and that works on a on a local level and a global level. I mean, for me personally, it's around this like relating to the natural world and identifying with the natural world above nationhood and politics. And that for me feels like a really important step if we're gonna kind of continue to to build healthy societies and have a healthy habitat. Um, but then also on a local level. Yeah, it's about, you know, you've got people that are older people that feel more connected to Yugoslavia and you've got younger people that are confused because all of their parents mix together and their mixed heritage, but living in countries with strong national identity and, and yeah, living on a border where you can see another country and how people feel closer to the people in another country that are 500 meters away than than the people who are living on the other side of their of their nation so i think the film is about identity it's like how do you identify to the place that you're living how do you identify to the landscape that surrounds you and how do you identify and react to the kind of social political um yeah, these these forces that are that are pushed on us every day, and it's it's up to us about how we how we put ourselves in the world and where we place ourselves, I guess. And have you have you seen the film with a with an with an audience outside of the Balkans? Um, has that happened yet? It has, yeah. It's happened a few times. Um, it's played in London and in Stockholm in Sweden, and then uh, last weekend. Um, yeah, last weekend or the weekend before, um, I went to New York and watched it there at the Bosnian Film Festival. Okay. And is that different, um, like for you, or like is that experience a different one? I found it exhilarating watching it in kind of all of these spaces. I think because there's such a fear that. I was going to get it totally wrong and it wouldn't make sense to anyone outside the region and people inside the region would also hate it. You know, that's the biggest fear. And also uh, upsetting and offending people. Um, and so I think that, yeah, I've, I always find it fascinating to watch with an audience to see when, you know, when people laugh. I mean, there's such a difference throughout the film, you know, I must have, I've watched it hundreds of times, but with an audience also, you know, tens of times and the reactions at different points are totally different depending on which country you're in. You know, in Slovenia, they, they really enjoyed the kind of, you know, the kind of subtle underlying humor around, around like nature and, and how some of the characters talk about that. But then in, you know, in, in Serbia and Bosnia, some of the more crude bits are definitely um, definitely have the place kind of, yeah, rocking, which is nice. So it's always different, but yeah, I can't, I haven't, you know, I haven't had enough experiences to say exactly what's different or where each piece, where each group of people sit, but I just know that it sits differently with everyone. Okay. Matthew, thank you ever so much for talking to us. Um, and uh, we hope that your film will travel widely and a lot of people will see it. Um, good luck with your next project. 
Um, and Sava is nominated for the Kino Kino Audience Award, sponsored by BR and Dreisat. And if you like the film, please vote for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks so much. Have good days.